Kia ora team, welcome back to the 2.3 gas exchange series. This is video 5. In this video you'll be learning about what the ecological niche of snapper means for gas exchange and how the gill system is ventilated and carries out gas exchange. By the end of this lesson you should be able to briefly describe the ecological niche of snapper and describe ventilation and gas exchange in the snapper gill system. So the second taxonomic group you'll be learning about in this achievement standard is the fish taxonomic group. An example of a fish is the snapper. And snapper live in the ocean, meaning they are aquatic animals. Snapper have high metabolic demands, which means they need a lot of energy to carry out necessary activities to survive. And this is for a couple of reasons. The first is that water is a lot denser and a lot more viscous or thicker than air, which means it's a much harder medium to ventilate or move over the gills. Because it's denser, it means that the snapper has to spend a lot more energy on ventilating their gills. Also, because the snapper is dense and viscous or thick, it's difficult to swim through. So snapper need a lot of energy to swim through hundreds of kilometers of water to spawn or release their eggs. Because snapper live in water, they get their oxygen from the oxygen that's already dissolved in water. And the ocean's only about 1% dissolved oxygen, which is very low when you compare it to air, which contains about 21% oxygen. It's important that you know that dissolved oxygen refers to oxygen gas from the atmosphere that has been dissolved into the ocean. There are also other properties of water that you need to be aware of. We've already talked about the very low concentration of oxygen in water and the fact that water is more dense and viscous than air. We've also said that because it's dense, water is hard to ventilate or move through. And to add to that, because water is dense, things float on water, which means water is buoyant. Gravity has less of an effect when objects are in water. And finally, like air, water also contains debris, like rocks and sand and seashells. And this can damage the respiratory surface. So like all fish, snapper have a gill system as their gas exchange system and it has adaptations to try to get as much of the 1% dissolved oxygen in water as possible. Because the percentage of oxygen in water is so low, the gill system has to be exceptionally efficient at gas exchange to be able to support the metabolic demands of the snapper. So what are the parts of the snapper gill system? The snapper gill system consists of the mouth, which isn't labelled here but it's pretty easy to see where the mouth is. And this mouth leads to the buccal cavity, which is the space inside the mouth and is roughly shown here by this green box. This buccal cavity is important for ventilation. To either side of the fish's head are bony flaps called the operculum. It's been cut away in this picture here, but you can clearly see the bony flaps, the operculum, on this picture of a real fish. There is an operculum on the left side and an operculum on the right side of the fish's head. The two operculum cover the two sets of gills, protecting them. Just behind the operculum is a space called the operculum cavity. So there are two operculum cavities because there are two operculums. These operculum cavities are important for ventilation too. Now let's talk about the gills. Here's a close-up of the gills and you can see that the gills are made up of several structures. The gill rakers, the gill arches, the gill filaments and lamellae or you can also say lamellae. These gills are supported by about eight gill arches, four gill arches on the left side and four gill arches on the right side of the head. Now gill arches are curved bony structures and have gill rakers attached on one side, the side closest to the mouth. And they have gill filaments attached on the other side, the side that's furthest from the mouth. Gill rakers are also bony structures that project out from the gill arches and they serve to protect the gill filaments from any debris in water that could damage the gill filaments. These gill filaments are delicate, bright red, 
long thin filaments or structures that project out from the gill arches. They kind of look like a comb or feathers. They're bright red because they contain lots of blood carrying blood vessels and each filament is highly folded. These thin folds of the gill filament are called the lamellae or lamellae. Here's a close up of these lamellae or lamellae. You can see that they're very thin. So here's a lamellae here. It's a fold of the gill filament and you can see that it's very thin and contain these tiny blood vessels called capillaries. Lamellae or lamellae are very important because they're the specialized respiratory surface of the gill system. This is where gas exchange occurs. I just want to show you guys the notes that I've taken here. If it's highlighted in green, it's a structure that drives ventilation. If it's highlighted in yellow, it's a structure that protects the gills. And if it's a structure highlighted in pink, it increases surface area. Here's another set of drawings that just focus on the gill structures. So the gill arch supports gill rakers. So remember the gill rakers are bony structures that protect these gill filaments. The gill arch also supports gill filaments that look like a fine tooth comb or feathers. And if we zoom into these gill filaments, you can see that it's folded into many lamellae, which is a specialized respiratory surface. Here's a real life picture of gill structures. You can see that there are four gill arches that support four sets of gill rakers and gill filaments. Gill rakers are on the side that's closest to the mouth. So this is the fish's head and the mouth would be um, on this side. And the gill rakers are on the mouth side of um, the gill arch. They protect the gill filaments from debris. Gill filaments are bright red because they're filled with blood vessels. You can't see it in this picture, but the surface of these gill filaments are highly folded, forming structures called lamellae, which is the specialized respiratory surface of gills. The other structure you can see in this picture is this operculum. It covers and protects these gills. And remember that the space directly behind this operculum is called the operculum cavity. So the space here in front of the gill filaments and behind this operculum is the operculum cavity. Here's another real life picture of the gills. You can see that there's the left operculum protecting the left gills and there's the right operculum protecting the right gills. So during ventilation, what's water's journey through the gill system like? What structures does water pass? Basically, water flows through the mouth, past the buccal cavity, and from the buccal cavity, water splits into two directions. Some water flows over the gills on the left side of the head, and some water flows over the gills on the right side of the head. These are the gills here, and after water flows over the gills, water exits the fish's head through the operculum cavity, which is here shaded in pink. Water flows out of the operculum cavity only if the operculum, this bit here, is open. And this type of ventilation is called unidirectional pumping because water is pumped in one direction, from the mouth, through the buccal cavity, over the gills, and out through the operculum. So how exactly do fish actually ventilate their gills? Basically, Muscles work together to increase and decrease the pressure inside the buccal cavity and inside the operculum cavities, causing water to enter the mouth, flow over the gills, and exit through the operculum. When I say muscles work together to change the pressure inside the cavities, I'm referring to the muscles that control the floor of the buccal cavity, so like the muscles on the underside of the fish's buccal space and the muscles that open and close the operculum. So here's another diagram showing these cavities. I remember the buccal cavity is the hollow cavity at the front of the fish's head, and the bottom part of the buccal cavity is called the floor, which is kind of like the floor of our own mouths. There are muscles that control how high or how low the floor of the buccal cavity is. If the muscles lower the floor of the buccal cavity, 
the pressure inside the buccal cavity decreases. It's kind of like when the diaphragm flattens, the pressure inside the lungs decrease. If the muscles raise the floor of the buccal cavity, the pressure inside the buccal cavity increases. Kind of like when the diaphragm goes back to its dome shape, the pressure inside the chest cavity decreases. The operculum cavities are the cavities on the sides of the fish's head, the hollow space between the operculum here and the gills in red. The operculum muscles are the muscles that control the opening and closing of the operculum, which affects the pressure inside the operculum cavity. If the operculum is closed, it increases the pressure inside the operculum cavity, and if the operculum is open, it decreases the pressure inside the operculum cavity. So it's all about what these muscles are doing to the buccal cavity and the operculum cavity. To let water in, the mouth opens and the floor of the buccal cavity lowers. This increases the pressure inside the buccal cavity, which causes water to get sucked in to the buccal cavity. So if there's a decrease in pressure, remember that um, things get sucked in. In this case, it's water that's getting sucked in. Now, when the mouth closes and the floor of the buccal cavity rises, this increases the pressure inside of the buccal cavity. Now, at the same time, muscles cause the operculum to open, decreasing the pressure inside the operculum cavity. So water's going to go from buccal cavity over the gills into the operculum cavity and out through the operculum. This is how unidirectional pumping happens. And here's another slide that summarizes the steps during ventilation in fish. To get water to come in, the mouth opens, muscles lower the floor of the buccal cavity. This decreases the pressure inside the buccal cavity to the point that the pressure inside the buccal cavity is actually lower than the um, pressure of water outside of the snapper. And so water is going to enter the buccal cavity through the mouth because water moves from an area of high pressure, which is the surrounding area, to an area of low pressure, which is inside the buccal cavity. Then the mouth closes. To let the water out, the muscles open the operculum on each side. This causes the operculum cavity pressure to decrease to a point that's lower than the pressure inside the buccal cavity. This makes water enter the operculum cavity and exit through the operculum because water is going to want to move from an area of high pressure, which is the buccal cavity, to an area of low pressure, which is the operculum cavity. Water comes out and then the operculum closes and we start again. So Kappa, you've made it to the end of the lesson. So by now you should be able to describe briefly the ecological niche of snapper and describe ventilation and gas exchange in the snapper gill system. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.